Cilia are small, slender, and hair-like structures on the surface of some cells. They can be non-motile or motile. Non-motile cilia do not move on their own. They play a sensory role. On the other hand, motile cilia can move, and their motion moves the fluid on the surface of the cell. In this video, we will talk about motile cilia only. First, let's talk about the structure of a cilium. It arises from its own basal body. The basal body is basically a centriole that lies immediately beneath the cell membrane. At the center of a cilium lies a structure called an axoneme. In a cross section, it looks like this. It's made up of microtubules. There are two complete microtubules at the center. By complete, I mean they make full circles in a cross section. Surrounding this pair of central microtubules are nine pairs of other microtubules. In each of these pairs, one microtubule is complete, making a full circle in cross section. And the other one is incomplete. It does not make a full circle on a cut section. It is fused to the complete microtubule like this. Now, each outer pair is connected to its neighbor by dynean arms. In a side view, we can see that multiple dynean arms connect adjacent pairs. So this is the axoneme. Now, this entire axoneme is covered by the cell membrane. So this was the entire structure of a cilium. Now let's talk about the ciliary movement. Cilia move in this type of whip-like motion. There are two parts to each stroke. Forward stroke is a rapid forward thrusting movement that pushes the fluid on the cell surface in a forward direction. Then comes a backward stroke, which is a slow, dragging movement. It produces almost no effect on the fluid movement. At the end of it, the cilia return to its starting position. This movement is repeated again and again. And of course, the same movement happens in all the cilia on the cell surface. Collectively, they move the fluid in the direction of the forward stroke. Now let's see how this movement is actually produced at the molecular level. Earlier we saw that adjacent peripheral pairs of tubules are connected to one another by dynean arms. Now, these arms act like molecular motors. At one end, it remains fixed. And the other end crawls over the microtubule. Thus, at molecular level, one pair of the microtubule slides over the other one. If this is clear to you, let's zoom out and see what effect this sliding produces at the ciliary level. At the base, all the microtubules are fixed to the basal body. So the crawling microtubule simply cannot move straight up. Rather, the sliding movement results in the bending of the cilia. Compare this new position with the initial one. Individual microtubule has slid over the other. And at the ciliary level, this sliding has resulted in the bending of the cilia. Thus far we have seen the movement only between two adjacent pairs. Similar coordinated movement occurs between each neighboring pair. And they all collectively bend the cilia. To bend the cilia in the opposite direction, the arms crawl in the opposite direction. So this is how ciliary movement is produced. Dynean arms use ATPs to crawl. So the ciliary movement is an energy-consuming process. So this was the mechanism of ciliary movement. Now let's see where we can see such ciliary movement in the body and its importance. The ciliary movement is mainly seen at two places. One at the respiratory tract and the other at the fallopian tube. In the nose and lower respiratory tract, the ciliary movement at epithelial cells moves the mucus toward the pharynx. From here, it is swallowed into the esophagus. 
foreign bodies or pathogens that enter the respiratory tract during inspiration are cleared this way. In the gastrointestinal tract, they are taken care of by gastric juice. In the fallopian tube, the ciliary movement of the epithelial cells moves the ovum from the ovary to the uterus. So this is all about ciliary movement. Now let's have a quick summary. Cilia are small, slender, and hair-like structures on the surface of cells. A cilium is made up of a central axoneme, covered by the cell membrane. The axoneme is made up of two central microtubules and nine pairs of microtubules surrounding it. Each neighboring pair at the periphery is connected by dynein proteins. At the base, the microtubules are connected to the basal body. In ciliary movement, a rapid forward stroke moves the fluid in the forward direction. And backward stroke slowly brings back the cilia to the initial position, without producing much effect on the fluid. The bending of cilia is produced by the crawling of one pair of tubules over its adjacent pair. The ciliary movement on the epithelial cells of the respiratory tract moves the mucus towards the pharynx for clearance. And in the fallopian tube, it moves the ovum from the ovary to the uterus. That's it for this video. Click here to read the notes on this video at our website. You can also explore our entire physiology animation video library over there. To support my free content creation, first leave a nice comment and then share the video with all your friends and colleagues. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.